Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back to episode 42 of the Tim Tebow Dynasty. In this episode, we take on the Denver Broncos, who are 0-3 this season since Peyton Manning's retirement. Coming into the game, we have the best offense in the league through the first three games. The Broncos' defense is ranked number 7, so it's a real test if the better de defense wins or the better offense is going to pull through. The Broncos do have a nice defensive end in Ryan Kerrigan, who's a 90 overall. And they have left outside linebacker Vaughn Miller, who's a 97. So I am going to have to worry about the pass rush today. And our offensive line proceeds to open the game with a sack. Last week we opened it with two. Hopefully we don't do that again this week. Now here we sit at the 30-yard line, facing a third and 15. We are in field goal range as long as we don't take a sack. None of my guys were really open on that play. So I took a shot at Justin Blackman winning a one-on-one -on -one jump ball, which he failed to do. I decided to go for it on fourth down because even if I don't pick it up, I trust my defense this game. The last two games against the Texans and Colts, we've given up a total of 19 points compared to the 31 we gave up to Aaron Rodgers week one. Probably should have kicked the field goal, but like I said, my defense has been playing pretty well, and we are facing a rookie quarterback because they took a second-round quarterback with the 30th pick in the second round to replace Peyton Manning, whose name is Mitchell Worth. He's about rated as 75. So I'm not too worried about him having a great game today. Apparently, he's having a better season than Andrew Luck because he opened the game with a touchdown. Andrew Luck put up a total of six points against us last week. And after another sack, we're facing a third and 21. Vaughn Miller gets his first sack of the game, forcing us to have to punt it now because it's fourth and really long. The Broncos defense is going to be tearing my offensive line apart all game. They get a total of 10 sacks today. Like I mentioned earlier, Ryan Kerrigan is their best defensive lineman with his second sack today. So the key to get my offense going is quick, short passes. The problem with that, though, is they do have cornerbacks D'Angelo Hall and Chris Harris, who are relatively pretty good at this point in their career in Madden, so... I can't just be chucking it whenever I want because they will end up picking me off. And we finally complete another uh, pass. Goes for negative yards. So, looks like we're giving the Broncos back the ball. They've already scored 10 points. And starting off the second quarter, we're down 13-0. We've had a lot of slow starts this season. Hopefully we can turn it around and continue winning. Or we're going to be 2-2 two and two heading into our next game against the Vikings. A nice scramble on the ground by Tim Tebow to set up, set up for third and short. So far today we have yet to pick up a third down. Hopefully we can get our first one right now. Justin Blackman gets his first catch of the day. He ended up first down we needed. Just a reminder, Justin Blackman needs to average about 130 yards per game the rest of the season just to break Calvin Johnson's record for reception receiving yards. And without Zach Miel on the field, Golden Tate has actually taken a bigger role in our offense. This Broncos defense continues to blitz, but... Hopefully, if I take the lead, that won't happen anymore. I play better when there's not as much pressure on me and I have more time to throw. I find Mercedes Lewis for the first down. Unfortunately, he fumbles and turns the ball over. So instead of scoring, the Broncos get the ball back. I don't know if the Broncos turn the ball over or 
we just had a really good punt return. But we start the ball. We start with the ball in basically the red zone. Hopefully we score here this time. Looking for Justin Blackman on the left side of the field. Hopefully I can find him in the back of the end zone. Justin Blackman makes the catch at the one-yard line. Unfortunately, he couldn't make it into the end zone, so we have to try again. The Jaguars now inside the 20. A week ago, they converted time and time again. First and goal, our offensive line gives up a sack. Probably do the same thing on second and goal. Vaughn Miller keeps beating... Our left tackle, who's supposed to be really good, supposed to be our best player on our team, Luke Jokel. And now he gets the second sack of the game, setting us up for third and goal, but third and long. And like I was trying to do on first and goal, we find Justin Blackman in the left corner of the end zone. Also, I have no idea why I called Luke Jokel our left tackle when he's clearly our right tackle. And so far, our def defense has given up 20 points this week. When in the previous two weeks, when we played better offenses, we've only given up a total of 19 points in the two games combined. So a garbage rookie quarterback has already put up 20 points on them. I don't, I don't understand these games. Whatever. Hoping Justin Blackman would again beat Chris Harris on the left side, which he did. We just underthrew that ball, and Chris Harris read it perfectly for the interception. Thankfully, our running back, Stephen Ridley, makes a big hit, forcing a fumble, and Justin Blackman recovers it. With about 45 seconds left and one timeout, we are trying to score to make it only a six-point game going into halftime because I believe our defense might be able to hold them in the second half and knowing my offense will probably score at least two more times. Justin Blackman makes a nice catch to pick up another 26 yards, setting us up in the red zone. The Jaguars have driven inside the red zone and last week they were so effective inside the 20. Steven really doesn't get a lot of yards, but he does get out of bounds, which stops the clock. See, I keep auto bowling to change the play because sometimes when I do, the defense switches and they switch from zone to. They switch from man coverage to a zone, and Chris, Chris Harris will play up on Justin Blackman, which will he'll beat and get open in the end zone. So I'm trying to get them to do that. Tebow's got the space to work. Scrambles to the right for a touchdown. And with Tebow's second touchdown of the game, we're now going into halftime down 20 to 14. So since you guys weren't in the locker room with us at halftime, I'll just give you a brief recap of what the coach's speech was since there's no video of it. The coach turned to our defense and said, I need you SOBs to start making some defensive stops and prevent this Broncos offense from scoring the rest of the game. He then turned to me, the captain of our offense, and the rest of our offense and said, I'm going to, and I interrupted and said, hey coach, we got this on offense. We just need to cut down on those turnovers. And we'll keep scoring. You get that defense figured out. The offense is good. And then the coach, after I said that, goes, Oh, oh, okay. Well, the offense is good. The defense, we have some mistakes to fix. 20 points to a rookie quarterback is not a good game. That's not even a good first half. We'll want zero points the rest of the game. So I told the coach, I'll make a bet with you. The offense will score more points the rest of this game than the defense will give up. And we'll win. And if we don't, 
We practice two a day the rest of the week next week before our next game. If we win this game because of the offense, no practice. We go straight to the next game. The coach said, oh, I like that bet. I think you're going to throw in a lot of interceptions, and this offensive line plays like shit. So they're going to give up a bunch of sacks today. You guys won't be outscoring our defense. So basically, me and the coach have a bet going in the second half. Our offense is going to score. We're going to win the game. And hopefully he can handle that defense to get them stopped. Looks like the defense did his job but that time. We're still up 21-20. to And on the following play, my offensive line is going to break down, letting defenders through. None of my receivers are open. I try to scramble to make a play in the backfield and cost us a bunch of yards. And Ryan Kerrigan picks up his third sack of the game. We're now facing a third and 34. Probably difficult to pick up here. So the Broncos offense will probably get another shot at taking the lead. Cotton Deacon, our first round pick, makes his first catch of the game. Not enough for the first down, so fourth and 20, we're going to have to punt. Looks like that bet between me and the coach is paying off because our defense again held him to zero points. I definitely held on to the ball too long there. I was hoping Harris wouldn't just stand there and he would actually cut up field to pick up more yards, but he just stood there and we ended up taking a bad play. Golden Tate was the third catch of the game and enough for the first down. He's actually pretty reliable this season compared to last season where he had a whole bunch of drops. And right now for the game, I'm completing 80% of my passes, which helps in the long run of breaking Drew Brees' 74.4% completion percentage for a season. Steven Ridley picks up back-to-back -back good runs. He's not as bad as I was trying to make him seem at the beginning of the season. So if you want me to start running the ball more with Steven Ridley, let me know in the comments. I could change up my play calling from less passes to more uh, runs. Maybe make it a little more 50-50. Justin Blackman's drop on that last play. Hurt my completion percentage, dropping us down from 80 to 76%. So, I'll let you know before the start of next game what percentage I'm at for the first quarter of the season. Because technically, this is our fourth game of this year, which is the first quarter of the season because there's 16 games. It is 4th and 10. I'm pretty sure I don't even get the chance to go for it. I think the coach, coach just punts to start the 4th quarter. Never mind. It's going to let me go for it. I did it earlier. I don't remember if that was the end of the 1st quarter. Maybe it was a 2-minute warning. But earlier, I thought I was going to do what it did. Where, because of the timeout, whatever, technically, it took away my option to go for it on 4th down. And I throw a pass to an open receiver, Cotton Deacon. For what would have been the first down, but he couldn't hold on to the ball as he was tackled. Back to back runs by Stephen Ridley sets us up for third and two. With his fourth catch of the game, Dwayne Harris picks up the first down, extending the drive and hopefully running out some more of this clock. We continually pick apart this Broncos defense. We're actually having a better game than I was expecting. 
especially with how bad our offensive line is playing, we should hopefully be able to walk out of here with a win. And for a moment, I thought it was Steven Ridley that was going to be hurt, leaving us with just one running back. Thankfully, it was not, and it was one of the Broncos' defensive players. Not that I would wish injury on anybody. Third and seven, we scramble for a nice first down. I was expecting Stephen Ridley to block that guy at the end, but for some reason he completely avoided him, and we didn't get as many yards as I was hoping. Ryan Kerrigan is actually a lot better than I thought he was going to be. He has eight tackles, like three or four sacks. I thought Von Miller was going to be the one that was going to terrorize us on the offensive line. Steven Ridley, instead of just running for more yards, was trying to like fake out Von Miller or something. And it picked up like one yard. And what I thought was going to be stopped on third down turns into a first down thanks to my great ability to run through players. And if you haven't figured out my play calling yet on this drive, I'm continually looking for Justin Blackman to get him another touchdown. But after his first half, I think the Broncos defense figured out that we're going to be looking to him a lot. And they've been covering him pretty well. He hasn't been open much this second half. And I have to go to the, my other receivers, which kind of sucks. I'm trying to get Justin Blackman those yards and touchdowns. Didn't want to just throw up a jump ball to him in the end zone because it would probably get picked off. And our offensive line decided to stop blocking after like three seconds. And we got hit. And again, another play called for Justin Blackman to get open. It looked like he was triple covered in the end zone. And I ended up taking a sack. Here was that kick. We prevent the Broncos from being able to win this with the field goal. Because now we have a nice four-point lead. And we have a four-point lead with just over two minutes left in the fourth quarter. All we have to do is run out this clock and we seal the game. I look for Justin Blackman deep and a connect, but again, he f drops the pass. This is like his, what, third drop today? That's what's, co what's confusing about Madden. Season one and two, Justin Blackman was one of my more reliable receivers in terms of actually catching the ball and not dropping. But now all of a sudden this season, he's had multiple drops. Today he has multiple drops. So I want to keep going to him. I like him. He's my best receiver. It's just I don't like those drops. And it looks like the refs called pass interference on that play. So we're going to get a nice chunk of yards right here. Another bad throw by me uh, that should have been picked off. Luckily, it was not. I keep trying to see if Justin Blackman will win that one-on-one -on -one ball against Chris Harris. And I called the same play like four times in a row, trying to get Justin Blackman to beat Chris Harris. And on the fourth try, he actually does and makes it to the end zone. And it looks like my defense scored as well. So now we're up 37-20. to 20. 
Uh, I guess that bet worked because our defense held them to zero points in the second half. I probably should have called the run play there and just ran out the clock, but I'm trying to score again. Make my stats look a little bit better because of that one interception. The ball gets to my receiver, but for some dumb reason, my tight end decides to switch up his route and like deflects the pass. And that seven yard run by Steven Ridley finishes off the game for us because now we're just going to sit out the rest of this clock. We improved to 3-1 and one with a 37-20 win over the Denver Broncos. And I just won my third straight AFC Player of the Week. And if you come back for the next game, we're going to be taking on the Minnesota Vikings for the first time in our three seasons. And like always, if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And check out one of our other videos. And he caught the long pass down the field for a touchdown. That is today's play of the game. For Bill Sims and all the crew at EA Sports, Jim Nance saying so long for now.